Today, 50,000 peanut farms thrive in the United States, most of them in the South. Virtually all of them have taken root in the past century, thanks to the horticulture professor who ventured to Tuskegee with a sense of mission in 1896. When George Washington Carver arrived by rail in Alabama, he saw no peanut fields. Instead, he was dismayed to see only one crop growing in the dry, sandy soil. In 1794, Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin. And from that date on into 1900, cotton was king. Carver knew that a single crop system was not good for the soil. Any time in agriculture you base your economy on one single crop, you're vulnerable. In a fertility standpoint, you're depleting the soil and maybe not returning all the nutrients there that is taken. Carver also recognized that the only thing more vulnerable than the nutrient-deficient soil was the multitude of poor black sharecroppers working in the cotton fields from sunrise to sunset. They were tied into the industrial system in, in the Northeast where they had the mills, cotton mills, and it was a big system and they were all captive in it. Carver was anxious to get to work to solve the South's agricultural dilemma. But when he arrived at Tuskegee Institute, he discovered that he didn't even have a laboratory in which to work. And Tuskegee had no money to properly establish one. So he went out into a local junkyard and found old pots and pans and spoons and took his students and said, we are now collecting the implements for our laboratory. He was the absolute first person to bring science to Tuskegee University. He was one of those great visionaries that, you know, when Booker T. Washington shows him this campus and there's, there is no agricultural college, there's, there's nothing, you know, he, he had the ability to, to take nothing and make it into something. And, and I think that, you know, his life was a great example of that. Carver started reaching out to the farmers in the area, showing them how the cotton they grew year after year was sapping the nitrogen and other nutrients from the soil. He encouraged them to plant crops that would restore these important elements back into the land. Crops like sweet potatoes, cow peas, soybeans, and peanuts. He was another one who came here because he cared about the man furthest down. He cared about the poor. He cared about uh, African-American people who were poor in the rural areas. And as such, he took his science to the people. Carver designed and implemented what he called a movable school to educate the farmers about crop rotation. Many took his message to heart, but few acted on his advice. The farmers agreed, but they did not immediately heed because they could not get loans at the bank for any crop except cotton. Yeah, it was the cash crop at the time, and a lot of people, that was their source of income, and it would have been very difficult for those farmers, especially the poorer farmers, to change over from cotton to peanuts, and, and there was no market at the time for peanuts. Carver's concern for southern agriculture wasn't restricted to how cotton was bankrupting the soil. Another threat was lurking menacingly on the horizon. The boll weevil the dreaded insect that had already decimated the cotton crops in Texas was making its way across the South. And it was moving through Mississippi, Louisiana, and headed to Alabama and Georgia at the rate of about 100 miles per year. And he warned them. There was no stopping this devastating force of nature. The weevil actually lays its eggs inside the unripe cotton bowl, and the newborns eat their way out destroying the crop in the process. Carver believed the South's best defense against the boll weevil was the peanut, but he had to convince Southern farmers that peanuts could become the cash crop that King Cotton had been for so long. George Washington Carver uh, really became an evangelist for peanut growing in the southeast part of the United States. In 1902, Carver entered his lab at Tuskegee to begin intense research into the peanut. He explored its properties and looked for ways to put the protein and vitamin-rich crop to use. Peanuts are made up of oils, 
resins, fats, sugars, and starches. And Carver came up with more than 300 new uses for them in recipes and in a variety of synthetic applications. And he made paper and ink and shoe polish and floor wax and axle grease. And he did have uh, some kind of a peanut plastic that he'd made. And all of these uses, 300 of them, all the way from various soups to soap and shaving cream, he built a foundation block upon which peanuts were ushered in. As Carver predicted, in 1915, the boll weevil hit the southeastern farms and completely destroyed the cotton fields. None of the farmers from Georgia or Alabama could pay off the loans on their land. But thanks to Carver's zealous advocacy, peanuts were poised to become a viable commercial alternative to cotton. By 1917, cotton was dethroned and peanuts was lifted up and the acreage increased in the southeast 400% in just two years. As peanut power spread across the south, Carver continued to experiment with a now lucrative crop. While analyzing the properties of peanut oil, he discovered that it was very easily absorbed when rubbed onto the skin. Carver promoted peanut oil as an effective lubricant to be used in vigorous massage treatments for those suffering from muscular disorders. Thousands of patients, including those crippled by polio, came to Tuskegee to receive peanut oil massages. Even more wrote to Carver to purchase the oil. While it was never considered a cure for any disease, those who underwent the treatment reported encouraging results. Word of Carver's promising work made it all the way to the White House. One of the extractions that he did with the peanut, uh, one of our presidents, Roosevelt, used it for his infantile paralysis. In 1942, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt paid an official visit to Tuskegee. He greeted Carver in person and applauded the research being done on the Alabama campus. I'm proud to come to Tuskegee because I'm proud of what Tuskegee has done. While Carver has been called the father of the peanut industry, there is one product that many mistakenly attribute to him, peanut butter. Peanut butter as we know it in America was basically invented in 1890 by a physician in Missouri. Um, and he was looking for high protein, nutritious foods uh, to feed his patients who had trouble eating meat because they had poor dental health. The first real introduction to the masses for peanut butter happened in 1904 at the Universal Exposition in St. Louis, and that's when really peanut butter was introduced to the American public. And then this complemented and augmented uh, George Washington Carver's research at that time. The two are not unconnected because he had done, laid the foundation, even though he didn't invent peanut butter, he had laid the foundation for raising up and digging deep into the kernel and chemically telling the world what a wonderful food product peanut was. His love of peanuts helped to really promote its usage widespread. Um, and I think that, you know, he would be very happy to see how his legacy has really taken shape in modern day America. We basically take a peanut that George Washington Carver helped develop and build in the field and help it grow to what it is today, uh, to the point that we now buy the peanut, we shell the peanut, and then we offer a service to customers who then further process it. Carver would no doubt be pleased with the assembly line efficiency of modern peanut processing plants, like Golden Peanut in Dawson, Georgia. We sell about 25 tons an hour of peanuts. It takes about a truckload an hour to supply this plant. The peanuts that make the grade are bagged and sent to manufacturers. Those that don't measure up undergo a process that's come a long way since Carver's day. 
broken kernels, damaged kernels, small sizes, are then sent to the crushing plant. There we process them for peanut oil and the balance being peanut meal. When Carver produced peanut oil in his lab more than a century ago, he boiled 25 pounds at a time and then extracted the oil by straining the mixture through cheesecloth. Today, the refineries steam heat the nuts and then put them through a mechanical press to extract most of the oil. At Golden Peanut, they press 350 tons of peanuts each day. George Washington Carver's work with the peanut in the early 1900s became the foundation for a new science known as chemergy, the process of discovering industrial uses for agricultural products. Using peanuts, sweet potatoes, soybeans, and other crops, he literally planted the seed for technological innovations that would change the course of farming in the United States.